<laughs> Praise God. Amen. You'd be surprised what just one day, taking some time out and go and find some quiet spots will do to uh, to refresh us, okay? Amen. Oh, I, I guess I have just not, uh, amen, Jesus, done a very good job at uh, explaining uh, what is about to take place. And why am I explaining to you now what is about to take place makes full proof of my ministry to you. And that's the part I'm not getting, and I guess I'm just not sharing it with you either. <laughs> you, Father God, uh, <laughs> Amen. Uh, when when he appears it will be suddenly and so the latter rain which to me is the double portion for this generation okay then you will have the eyes to see the revelation. Until then, you cannot. <clears throat> now, I can encourage you all I want for you to come into it and begin to understand what I've shared with you, but for you to begin to come into the revelation or have the eyes to see it, before the latter rain comes, which is the double portion, and gives us the eyes to see, all right, would be contrary, amen, to what I'm sharing with you. Uh, does that mean there aren't others? I, I've shared with you before, brothers and sisters. Now, I hear a lot of... And I want to go with this vain imagination that comes forth from the wisdom of man. I want you to understand the wisdom of man as it re relates to the Kabbalah. Okay, because there are people out here, one in particular, who is not sharing with you, amen, Jesus, from what she has come in to understand, but what she has received as a teaching from the wisdom of man, okay, in the Kabbalah. There are other teachings out here which amount to the wisdom of man. And to, the Word says that <laughs> they're getting ready to go crazy, insane, all right? So, uh, as a result of it not being Holy Spirit, Spirit engrafted in them and having worked through them, having become a part of who they are. But because it has been in their minds and they have received it from others as another gospel. Amen, Jesus? The result of that is their insanity. I'm reminded, and I have several times before I've wanted to mention it, and I may have once before. Stolen waters are sweet, but nonetheless, they are stolen waters. Many out here are sharing stolen waters, things that they themselves have not come into, but have read from the works of others and they believe them. And they share them with you. That's why I've mentioned that you need to turn away. And I very rarely, if ever, okay, with the exception of uh, what 77AEJ has been sharing, and I explained to you 
when this all began, what I had seen taking place, her being lifted up upon that pinnacle, okay, and then pride, amen, Jesus, causing her to fall, where she began to start to share as if she was a teacher after having just become a babe. And I do not tell you, amen, Jesus, that there is not the unctioning of the Holy Spirit of God through the babes. Yes. But that is not the maturing, okay, in the Holy Spirit that takes place as fire being tried or as gold being tried in the furnace of affliction. All right? Acquainted with sorrow and grief, which are all part of the issues of what goes on for the gold that has been tried, all right, and tested, that the Word says, suggest to them that they go out and buy that gold. <laughs> so, <clears throat> this is why it's been such a wine press for me. It has been my calling to have to share these things with you. Amen, Jesus without any of you actually knowing or seeing it yourself. Now, there, there are surely some very faithful, earnest believers who come to this channel and have remained faithful in viewing them. <laughs> and... I will be forever grateful to them. And it's, <laughs> praise God, my belief that when he comes suddenly and this outpouring takes place, and those of you who have been watching these videos, all right, receive the eyes to see the revelation, all right, Everything that's been being shared to you up to this point will make you so much more better prepared as workmen to go into the field than all of those who have not been here and had these shared with them. So it'll be, without a doubt, a, a very great blessing for you when it becomes that reality. Unfortunately, though, as I've tried to share with you before, in the inner court of those who have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, amen, and have been around for a while, because they are not chosen, become jealous, angry, spiteful, and they turn away from God in this. They refuse to receive and accept the sons and daughters of God as the Melchizedek priesthood, which is in submission to God in order to be gathered in. They just will not accept it. Their eyes will be open. They'll see it. But they will not accept it. That's their turning away from God, and that's between them and God. So, these are very serious times regarding the church, especially any and all of them who up to this hour have been claiming the name of Jesus Christ in hypocrisy, just to show, because he's coming to clean his house. <laughs> There's a house cleaning coming, okay? Okay. And either you will come into submission and obedience or you will not enter in. There is no two ways about this. God, God has been merciful and patient and loving, all right, 
all through the journey and the fall of man and continually reached his hand out. All right? And he said he would not strive with man forever. He just will not. And when that time of end comes, of which he no longer is willing to strive with man in us to bring us to where he would have us to be, that we might have our souls saved, when that time comes, it's done. There isn't going to be any more second chances. Now, I know I've mentioned to you possibility of the second set of workmen, footmen, who I believe represent the elect, natural Israel seed, of whom the devil goes off to make war with after the woman has been taken away by the wings of an eagle. That's the, that's the believer of the body of Christ, okay, who has allowed themselves to be gathered in at that hour, who has has been a part of that rising up of that standard that takes place, all right, and the wheat, the whole nine yards, okay, but is not, I believe, a part of the remnant that does get saved out of natural Israel. They're grafted in to the tree, to their original tree. But it's, it's, there are scriptures that lead me to believe that if there is a martyring that goes on, okay, an actual physical death, that it's of the elect, the second set of footmen. And what many of you don't understand is that there are two parts to this footman thing. <laughs> Just as there is a natural man, there is a spiritual man. Just as there is natural Israel, there is spiritual Israel. <laughs> okay? And these are the two footmen. The natural seed is the elect. The spiritual seed is the election of grace. Okay? <laughs> Well, anyway, during that period of time in their ministry, I believe it's them. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you exactly how many I think there are that will be martyred of natural Israel. 7,000. I believe there's only 7,000 righteous men, all right, that come forth from natural Israel to gather in those who repent after, okay? And they're referred to as people who don't take the mark of the beast, whether or not it's a spiritual in its ministry, which I've mentioned to you, the mark of the hand represents, just like when Peter and, uh, who was it, Peter and John? I, I'm not sure, who went to the temple. And uh, there was a crippled man sitting at the temple. And uh, Peter reaches forth his hand. Okay. Silver and gold I have none, but such as I have, rise up and walk. And at the same time, he extended his hand. Hands, spiritually speaking, just like I've shared with you about women representing your ministries, hands represent the ministry, the work. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Reaching out for one another. All right? Lifting them up. It's the natural act of the moving of the Holy Spirit in your life. In an earthly ministry. All right? In the natural. Praise God. Just like the parable about the, uh, the innkeeper in the inn. Okay? This is what actually has been taking place in the natural realm as a result of of the leading of the Holy Spirit. Well, the other one is having your conscience seared. Okay, when the Holy Spirit attempts to convict you, okay, and get you to turn away from a lie that you want to continue in, what happens is that your conscience is seared. 
And what is that? But a mark, amen, Jesus, upon the forehead. That's the mark, spiritually speaking. Does this mean that what takes place spiritually does not take place literally? Absolutely not. Does not mean that there is not a literal mark, RFID chip. I don't have any idea what takes place with them after we've been taken into that secret place. Or at least what takes place with them outside of those who are gathered. That's not what my ministry has been for. My ministry has been for the call to repentance in and among the household of faith. <clears throat> Natural Israel's, the elect, that 7,000 which I believe are martyred, is for their entering into the kingdom of heaven. I tried to explain to you guys, you're not all, <laughs> we're not all going to receive the rewards right here, right now. The only ones who receive the reward of immortality, which is only one of the rewards, are the sons and daughters of God. And the reason I believe they do is because I believe they're a part, as soon as the church, okay, the woman, heavenly Jerusalem, who is gathered in, okay, the children of God, is taken off into a secret place, amen, Jesus, which I've shared with you before. I believe it may very well be the third heaven outside of this realm, yet we're here, just as Peter and John were. Amen? They were here, but yet they were there. And they were so there, they didn't know that they weren't here. And I believe that's possible. That that's what being under the palm of God's hand is all about. His shelter, the anointing, the covering. Just like natural Israel was actually literally there, okay, but they were covered and protected by the blood that was upon their doorpost. Okay? And their obedience to Moses to God through Moses. Alright? So, amen, Jesus. <laughs> when the door is shut, the door is shut. There is no coming into that after that. The gifts that you're going to receive, everything regarding the salvation of the soul, spirit, soul, and body, amen, has been done. It's sealed. It's it's finito. Since we serve him in spirit, soul, and body, and I tried to explain to you that they represent the thirtyfold, sixtyfold, and hundredfold, the spirit of the thirtyfold are going to be as the angels in heaven beholding the face of God. <laughs> the soul of the sixtyfold, who by faith received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in this lifetime, prior to the door closing, will live eternally in the new heaven and the new earth. The souls of men being returned to the Garden of Eden, the new heaven and the new earth, which happens after the thousand year rule and reign, here on natural earth. Because it's my belief that just like Noah's Ark, after the flood, after the period of time of the enemy, judgments of God and everything else that takes place, and when Jesus has returned and ruling and reigning, okay, with the rod of his mouth, you got to listen to what's being said, okay, then all of those men who did not get destroyed, natural man, because he comes to put an end to the destruction that's taking place. Had he not returned before the destruction, okay, then no one would have been alive. But for the sake of the elect, who are still here, he returns. And 
and puts an end to it. So man is still here. The elect are still here. It's the sons and daughters. Okay, after the woman has been put aside into a secret place that are called up to meet him in the air and are transformed into immortal beings and are with him in that army of which is a, appears before every man's eyes. They're with him in and forevermore. They rule with him on earth during this thousand year period of time of which natural man is still here and you're still here. <clears throat> you're coming back out of that ark, back out of the third heaven and are going to inherit the earth. All of this is what most of the, the entire Christian faith has no idea about having it take place. This is what they've been deceived of and don't understand, of which the Father is about to open your eyes that you might see it. This is why there's a separation. Oh, you mean I don't get the kingdom of heaven? Well, I did all this and that and everything else. And you mean, in other words, I don't get to be immortal beings? They're not satisfied with the rewards they are going to get and receive. That's why when it refers to that period of time, it says that some will live to be 120 years of age and see their great-great-great-grandchildren sit upon their knees and their, all the days of their lives be blessed, while others will only live to be 70 years of age and not receive the blessings of God, is because by the rod of his mouth and the establishing of those places of which they bring forth the grain offering, there are going to be men and women out here who refuse to do it. Why do you think he rod, rules with the rod of his mouth? And who is his rod? Well, read about it. Read about the rod of his mouth and who the rod is. I believe it's Israel. And who are Israel? But the faithful. Because the meek inherit the earth. They have rule and authority. As long as they continue to bring their grain offering. And our insubmission and obedience to the laws of God, which is what I believe we all come into in the natural realm for this thousand year period of time. <clears throat> These are the issues that people are not aware of, nor are they willing, going to be, many, the vast majority, are not going to be willing to receive or accept. That's why there's only going to be few of us, folks. And by the grace of God, amen, Jesus, and the coming forth of this work in the will of the Father and the shaking of heaven and earth and everything else that's about to begin first in the household of faith and then to the world, all right, is so very important. Now this testimony had to come forth before it took place, as I've said before, to prove the ministry. <laughs> when they begin to take place, then it will dawn on you, Amen, Jesus, that's exactly what Brother Andrew has been sharing with us. And by grace and faith, because you have been obedient, your reward for that obedience is what, Sister Jolene? To walk with God. Amen, <laughs> Jesus. Because you received him who came in the name of that prophet. All right? He who receives the prophet in the name of that prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And I assure you, you well, shall most certainly walk with God, my sister Jolene. And all of them 
who receive by faith, okay, that prophet or a prophet in the name of that prophet will also receive the reward, a prophet's reward. And that faith, folks, that's what it's about. <laughs> okay. So if you jump in here right here right now and believe by faith in him and Jesus and what's being shared with you, amen, Jesus, when it takes place, why do you think God would have a separate reward for you? Because you believed when nobody else would. When the Son of Man returns, shall he find faith? What do you think he's returning to find? Does it make any sense to you that he will return to find that coming in the clouds where every man's eyes shall see and every mouth shall confess? There's no faith in that. That's the, that's the end of the story, folks. There is no faith required in that. It's going to happen whether they believe it or not. But where the faith is at is that in the anointed Word of God, Jesus, the resurrected Lord, in the voice of many waters, speaks forth in the gathering together of the wheat, of the household of faith. That's where faith is at, prior to the actual event. So, <laughs> Praise God. Oh, I just I, I just felt a need to have to try to clarify this thing as well as I can so that you really get the point here of what's going on right here, right now, before your very eyes. Because there's so much stuff out here, amen, Jesus, that is just vain imagination, stolen waters, readings from a, a, a book written by other men, outside of the Word of God. They're not being obedient to the righteousness of the law and receiving baptism. And, you know, unfortunately, I just got the thought the other day, you know who else calls uh, people who uh, they're having relationships with outside of marriage, who calls, call them partners? And I don't know to be the truth, brothers and sisters, but I ain't never seen Mama Ding's partner. I'm telling you folks, there's a whole slew of people out here who think it's okay to have sexual relationships with a woman. There's a spirit of lesbianism, okay, being pampered to in the flesh by others who I don't even think for the most case, even know what's taking place. They, they want so much that they be received and what God has given them, that they, others receive what they're sharing, that they're willing to allow, what did we say about the priest who will not remain faithful, but to follow after the people? Okay? That's what's happening. I, I pray for them. I pray that they turn away from it. The Father has attempted to encourage at least one of the ones I'm referring to that I believe by faith is receiving things from the Holy Spirit of God through her dreams and different understandings. Now I think she's, it's being tainted a bit because of other ministries that she's receiving, so I'm, I pray that she turns away from anything else, any other teachings except for what she's coming into, all right? But that she and Sister Catherine, and I'm, I'm referring to this little three-stranded cord over here of Mama Ding, Catherine Blatzill, and Shanana, 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 Shanana Danielle. And they also include 77AEJ. Now, who else is in and among that mix? I can't tell you, but I'm going to tell you ahead of time, maybe just watch out for it. Because they themselves, 
It's my belief that God himself is going to come in there and cause that group to get broke up. Through the teachings and the ministering of the Holy Spirit, probably through Sister Shania Danielle and Sister <laughs> Catherine, if she'll ever just grab a hold of that the truth that's trying to be revealed to her and finally come in and allow this work to begin to take place for her and rise up in her ministry joining together in a true witness of the Holy Spirit I pray it takes place I, pr I pray to God that, that, they, that those two at least recognize what where they're at and who they're among. That's what I sense in the spirit. Seven seven A E J. I mean Jesus. I don't know what's going to have to take place with her. I know I, my brother, sister, believer, and I. You know, I believe I shared in the spirit how the order of that return is going to take place in the, in the call of repentance and coming into the revelation. It's my belief that because he was the last. To appear in my radar on the screen during that period of time in the sharing of the revelation, okay, the types and the shadows and forthcomings of those things, amen, Jesus, which brings to an end the in part ministry when the sudden appearance takes place and the eyes have been opened that we might see, okay, and Solomon's ministry shot it with the gospel of peace upon their feet, understanding feet. <laughs> that he would be the first to actually enter in because he was the last. And so in that reversed order, it was my belief that 77 AEJ would be the next one and then Sister Catherine. Uh, whether or not it was actually a prophetic utterance and uh, of God, we'll have to see. When the awakening takes place, we'll have to see where the change around takes place. Because, folks, I have never, ever said that Sister Catherine, nor Sonata Danielle, nor 778J, nor my brother, a sifted believer, or others, did not have an earnest desire and were not genuine in their faith and the work and will of the Father, and their desire to have that take place in their life. I have never said that was not true of them. <laughs> What's the word say? We're not even supposed to discuss who it is that shall come up or who shall go down. It's none of our business. We're to receive one another as if we had been born in the land. What land? <laughs> Kingdom of Heaven, Holy Spirit, ministry. As if they were born in the land. Well, praise God. <laughs> it's going to be long before these things begin to take place and you're going to finally recognize and understand the truth of what I've been sharing with you. Amen? So, may the Lord bless you and keep you in Yeshua's name. Amen, Jesus. Amen.